I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of what is known simply as Lake 227 in the Experimental Lakes area in northwestern Ontario, Canada. It's here where it all started for the ELA more than four decades ago, when people around the world were noticing that their lakes were turning green with algae and they didn't understand why. Through carefully controlled scientific experiments, scientists here proved that it was the nutrient phosphorus that was primarily responsible for algal blooms. A related study produced this photograph, which shows what happens when you add phosphorus to one side of the lake, but not to the other. It's been called one of the most famous photos in ecology. Dr. Michael Patterson is a former chief scientist at the ELA who has seen the kind of influence the research here can have. The thing about some of the pictures that came out of Lake 227 and out of Lake 226 is that you didn't need any fancy graphs, you didn't need any mathematical models. You showed this to a regulator and they saw a, a picture of a lake where one half was clear and one half was, was green with algae and you said this side got phosphorus, that side didn't. And you ask someone, what do you want your lake to look like? Uh, and, and it's obvious that they're going to want the clear water. This knowledge has also had effects on many aspects of our daily lives. For instance, it led us to remove phosphorus from dishwasher detergent. It's also changed how we manage our lands. For example, helping us to value wetlands like this one for its amazing ability to absorb phosphorus. It has been crucial in coming up with solutions that we know will work. This is kind of the final stop in the process where we work at the whole lake scale to see what does or doesn't work. The implications of this research have stretched far beyond Canadian borders. Solutions to reduce phosphorus inputs are being sought all over the world, such as in Lake Belaton in Hungary, Lake Taihu in China, and Lake Victoria in Africa. 45 years after research began at Lake 227, new questions are being raised about nutrient loading. For example, what is the role of nitrogen in eutrophication? And what factors affect how long it takes lakes to recover? It's answers to questions like these that will help us learn what to expect when we're trying to help lakes such as Lake Winnipeg, Lake Erie, and those around the world. To learn more or to donate, visit our website at iisd.org slash ELA.